Hey guys, it's Morgan coming back to you with more awesome content on the 2023 300XC. Uh, you guys saw the thumbnail. I know what you're expecting, but it's going to be bigger than that. This is going to be a big uh, video. It's going to be probably pretty long and it's going to be awesome. We are going to be valving the suspension, uh, full TBT setup on this front and rear. Uh, also going to be going into and diving into how much grease is in the steering head bearings, the linkage bearings and everything, uh, swing arm bearings, all that, because I have yet to do that. <laughs> I haven't actually um, uh, greased the chassis on this. I normally do. Uh, unfortunately, the bike is dirty. It's not terrible, but whatever. It's dirty <laughs> because I did not. Uh, it's cold outside and it snowed and I don't want to wash the thing right now. So it's okay. That's all right because it's my bike. I can do it. Um, I will take the parts off and then I will uh, clean them very well uh, before I reinstall. Uh, another thing I'm going to be shooting today is I'm going to be installing one of these two RK Tech heads. Uh, this is a stock head. This is one RK Tech head. This is another RK Tech head. Kelsey sent me uh, two to try out um, so we can get the right one. Um, we are working with him on developing this head. Uh, a lot of people love his heads the way they are. Other people think that it's too much like a diesel, too much low end, not enough over rev. Anyway, um, I love his heads. I've never had a problem, but this bike has a crazy amount of over rev for a 300 and I don't want to lose that. So uh, he and I are working together to make sure we get the right head for you guys so that it's got the low end grunt that you want out of a 300, um, especially at elevation. Um, basic, basically what we're shooting for is to be able to make this bike run like it does at sea level up here at this elevation. I'm not going for any kind of crazy huge gains as if I were you know better than sea level. I don't, I can't imagine needing much more than this thing would make at sea level. So. Um, that is our goal is to try to get back as much as we can without losing that over rev. Uh, so anyway, yeah, let's dive in and start taking this apart. Uh, Zach is on his way down here to uh, show me. I'm not valving it. Zach's going to be valving it, but he's going to be teaching me about the valving. Uh, so hopefully it'll be teaching you about what it is we actually do uh, with TBT and why it's so important and why it costs the money that it costs because it's not cheap. So anyway. Let's take this thing apart, get all the parts off, and Zach will be down here shortly. Guys, this thing, <laughs> in that one nasty sand race, this thing got corroded enough uh, to need to be cleaned really well again. It doesn't just slide in and out like it used to. Um, that's crazy, guys. That was one race. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what these bearings look like. All right, guys, I want to take just a second of this video to talk about the counter shocks. Um, a lot of people are wondering whether or not it actually works. A lot of people doubt that it works. A lot of people uh, say they have science that says it can't work. Other people, obviously, the opposite say it's the best thing in the world. So I know Nathan, um, who made this. And uh, yes, this was free, uh, so uh, full transparency. I did not have to buy it. Um, but I also don't have to put it on my motorcycle. Uh, he didn't pay me to put it on the motorcycle. Uh, it's just a free part. <sighs> this is not a game-changing piece of equipment uh, to put on your motorcycle. It's not like valving your suspension or um, you know getting the right set of tires and mooses, uh, which I think can be a game-changer, honestly. Um, you know, getting the gearing right and like whatever it, what this thing is, is it, it's a, it's a gain and it's a gain that like, if you're looking for just that little extra edge or just a little bit more comfort, uh, or a little bit less fatigue at the end of the day, that's what this thing does. Um, Google tuned mass dampers. You'll see that they, yes, are a scientific thing. They do work. Um, and it works on this motorcycle. That's all I can say. It definitely works. Whether it's worth the $350 that he charges, that is up to you to decide. But the cool thing is you can order one from him. He will send it to you. You can put it on your motorcycle, test it. If you don't like it, you send it back and he gives you all your money back. So 
I know that means you have to spend $350, but if you have that money, if you're even considering an upgrade of that kind, try it. Let me know. Um, like I said, 100% money back guarantee. Anyway, sorry, shameless plug, but I just want to touch on this because a lot of people see this on my bike and wonder what it is. There we go. <laughs> and there is the damping side. So now what I'm gonna do honestly is uh, I'm gonna get the rear shock off here in just a second, but um, let's take a look at these triple clamps and see really how much grease is in them because who knows, right? <laughs> um, let's see. They are full of sand. I swear I washed the crap out of this thing and it's still got sand everywhere. Right. So we're gonna take the fender off. So same setup as before, 17 millimeter nut or bolt, I guess technically it's a bolt up here. Um, hold that on, same torque values of everything. Nothing of, none of that has changed, which is really nice because I like that setup. Loose. Now let's see if we can lift this off, there we go. We can kind of set that there. I'm gonna lift up on this dust seal. This isn't. This is different here. Let me bring you guys in. This is a little bit different. Uh, it doesn't have that O-ring right there that it used to have. Kind of like that O-ring, honestly. Well, it, oh no, it now, huh? That's cool. It's another seal. So instead of having an O-ring, separate O-ring. It's all one thing, can't break that loose. So, but that's got another rubber seal. So it's still keeping stuff out. That's honestly, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, ingenious way of saving money, um, but still providing, I think a good part, you know, it's like got the outside rubber seal and the inside rubber seal all in one. That's pretty sweet. So this looks like it's got plenty of grease in it, honestly. Um, we're gonna go ahead and pop it out of here. Maybe. That is, that is tight. We'll grab a rubber mallet, go easy with it. There it goes. There we go. And let's take a look at this bottom bearing. Definitely has grease um, and it looks good. Uh, not quite as much grease as I'd like to see, so we're gonna add some there. And let's take a look at the top bearing. About the same situation. Definitely grease, not quite as much as I'd like to see. It looks like they are making these in Brazil. That's right there. So if you guys wonder about China, um, no. Brazil, I don't know if it's any better, but it's definitely from Brazil. So I'm gonna add some Motorex grease, put a little bit of here on the outside. That doesn't really do much. I mean, it does squeeze some in there, but the real way you get grease into a tapered bearing is to shove it in from the top and the bottom. So you kind of like, just force it in and then same thing on the bottom and we'll get lots in there. Uh, set that in there. I'm gonna do the same with this. I'm gonna force it in from up here and really push it down in. So just 
And don't worry about making a mess. It's part of the deal. <laughs> And always get this whole thing back together and then clean it up. All right, so now. I think that, that part is really cool. Get our top back on. Try to do this without. There we go pushing it all the way back down through there we go get our nut or bolt started now i'm just gonna tighten this down a little bit not i'm not gonna put it to torque or anything yet because uh really to get this lined up and torqued correctly you need to be putting the forks in there and that's not going to happen towards the until the end of the day here until we get done uh valving everything so just get it to where it'll hold it and there we go so definitely some grease in there uh not quite as much as i'd like to see but i guess that's pretty much normal uh and that's not just KTM, that's pretty much all the manufacturers seem like there's not that much grease in there. So uh, now we're going to take the, I think, I think we got to take the seat tank and everything off to get the shock out because the shock, the way it's set up with the exhaust and the shocks, anyway, whatever. Um, I think we got to get everything out of the way and get the subframe uh, at least to move, I think. So um, join me as we figure this out. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're down this far. Looks like the, uh, let's take a look at this composite subframe because I don't think anybody's really showed you guys this yet. So subframe's interesting. It, aluminum spars down to here, which I think is where they were having a lot of trouble breaking. So that's cool. Comes up, goes into the composite, and then all this is composite and composite to here. So. Pretty interesting. Uh, we're gonna try the whole flippy uppy thing to get to the shock. So we got that loose, that's the 45 Torx. We're gonna take this out. We'll do the same on the other side and see if it comes loose. So everything's loose. Boot on the throttle body's loose. Let's see what happens here. Not one to let go yet. There we go. Nice. All right, so that's not bad. Doesn't. Ooh, there we go. That'll go right up and over. Not bending anything. I mean, let's get the harness bent, but not bad. There we go. That'll hold her up. Man, this thing is dirtier than I thought it would be. I swear, guys, I cleaned the crap out of this thing, but man, it's having, it is, that race was rough on it. It's okay. We're gonna get her nice and clean. There we go. Shot comes right out. <laughs> it's a joke. It, there's a lot of work to get it out of there, but, um, but it's nice. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward work. It comes right out. Check this shock out, guys. It's way brand new and mine is way dirty. But anyway, we're gonna get it nice and clean. But it is a crazy new design. Uh, and today we're gonna be uh, not only valving it, we're gonna be putting a factory KTM uh, bladder kit on it. Yeah, that's right. KTM now has a factory bladder kit. So I am going to spend some time cleaning all this up for Zach so that we're not dealing with dirty parts while we're valving. Uh, and then we'll come back and take a look at the bearings and stuff in here. All right, guys, we've got it partially cleaned up, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this spring off. I wanna make sure that the spring I have is gonna work. 
because uh, these came with shorter springs than what KTM's used to come with. They're 240 millimeter uh, instead of uh, 260. I have a 260. This is the right rate. And if we have enough threads, that won't matter. I guess it'll technically be a little heavier. Uh, maybe that's one way they're saving weight is uh, by doing that. But um, I think we should be should be good, but we're gonna find out. And this is interesting new design up here. I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, that's kind of cool. So this splits now. It's pretty cool. It's plastic. Whatever. Big bumper. Seems legit. So now let's see if the spring I have is going to work. Let's see if we can get that on there. Work. Boom. Maybe. Oh, come on. There we go. So yeah, that's not compressed too much. That's tight though. <laughs> so the answer is yes, you can put a 260 uh, spring on it, um, but it is really tight. So that's all right, no big deal. Now I gotta get it off obviously, but. <laughs> all right, experiment completed. Now I'm going to clean this stuff up because it is so sandy from that race. It's crazy. All right, guys, Zach is here. We are ready to start tearing suspension apart. Um, you can see he's measuring things. We This is neat. Uh, so they made it so that it's going to be a little bit easier to remove this off of the shock and install the bladder kit. If, of course, you have a 45 millimeter hex thing, which we don't have. <laughs> I'm guessing KTM price sells one. We will definitely be getting one, uh, but we will be removing that the old school way, uh, probably with a strap wrench and some effort. Uh, so yeah, Zach is working on getting that sucker apart while he does that and he's eating a burrito. Look at him. Don Hilberto's. If you're in Montrose, go to Don Hilberto's. It's the best. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's take a look at the bladder kit that, by the way, is an OEM option now. I mean, you can't get it on your bike, uh, OEM, but from WP, for all those who uh, have been yelling and screaming about how uh, the piston's better than the bladder, blah, 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 blah. KTM now offering the kit as an upgrade. Ooh, some very nice parts. And there it is. The whole thing it's direct from WP with the little exact sticker and everything. So, like I said, all of you guys who've been yelling and screaming that WP and the piston is the best way to go and whatever. Clearly, they think that this is a pretty good option, too. So we'll be installing that guy as well as doing all the valving. So you guys can learn with us. All right, guys, we are getting it apart. And you can see this is the high speed. Um, basically the same idea as before, but definitely a different uh, cap uh, because of the new manual like controls that you can or clickers that you can get to with your hands. Um, so a little bit different uh, shape and style there, but basically the same idea. Mr. Sheets has got the shock part over there-ish. This obviously coming apart like a normal one. Maybe, maybe coming apart. We're going to find out. Oh, there you go. <laughs> because of that mud race, guys, things have been a little bit harder <laughs> to, to disassemble. <laughs> but... Uh, Looks like it's all right. It's in decent shape. What do we got there, Mr. Sheets? Pretty standard. Pretty standard looking. Right on. 
not a lot changed there. Maybe a little bit fatter o-ring on the seal head, but pretty much just like a normal shock P stone. Um, so obviously that's where the valving is going to happen here. Actually, I'm going to get in here while Mr. Sheets is doing that and just show you guys a little bit. So this is the piston that's moving through the oil. These shims that you can see here are the valve. This is the compression valve. That's the rebound valve because as this compresses, it's going to go like this. It's pushing oil through here, coming out and hitting these shims and flexing those shims. And you see it's a very uh, one-dimensional uh, looking stack. It's not, not a lot going on there. So um, for a suspension tuner, that'll make sense. For you guys who don't have any idea what's going on, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, Happy to see, uh, still got a really nice lock nut here so we don't have to do any grinding on anything. We just take this off, we'll clean it really good, we'll put Loctite, go back together. We don't have to take off any peening here, which is nice. Um, but yeah, looks like everything else is pretty well standard looking stuff. So Mr. Sheets, heating that can up so we can get it off. Uh, we don't have to worry too much about the heat because KTM and WP in their wisdom sent us a new o-ring with it so we got a new o-ring so if we melt that o-ring no big deal also really nice looking Schrader valve and cap in there too which is sweet so now we're going to find out how this thing comes apart huh yeah there it goes that wasn't actually too terrible go nice big nitrogen reservoir so when this cools off we'll get that sucker off of there replace it with the WP one all right I'm gonna go do the job of cleaning all right guys so Zach is over there studying the uh uh, build sheet for my bike uh, for the valving so he's doing while he's doing that I got the shock body super super clean and dry I uh, got the new o-ring on there uh, now we're going to do all that we do to uh, the air side now the reason I'm not doing anything more I'm not taking it apart and servicing it is because the bike only has 11 hours on it so we don't need to do new bushings or any of that stuff so um but what we like to do is we like to put a little bit of oil in the air spring side because the grease that they put in there eventually all just gets pushed out to the sides and eventually it starts to get sticky and that generally happens actually a little bit before uh the 40 50 hour service mark so uh, what we like to do is take the valve core out of here this has got like 140 pounds in it so and then this just has some motor oil in it, like 1040 kind. We're going to compress this down. And we're going to squeeze a couple. And I don't know what the actual number is, guys. Sorry, but uh, um, of exactly how much. But you want to get, I don't know, a couple cc's. Get that in there. Leroy's being ridiculous. Uh, now we're gonna air this back up to whatever the spec says. I think it's, he's got it at like 140, 145. All right guys, there is the valve stack. I was just talking to Zach and I guess uh, there are some serious differences between uh, this setup and the previous setup, both in the shock and fork or so far uh, shock. Really mostly on the fork. Mostly on the fork. What Travis has spec here. Gotcha. Sure the, I didn't look at the stock yet. Gotcha. So, um, yeah. So definitely some very different um, stuff going on in, in this suspension than uh, previous air forks. So shock. It's a new shock, new shock body, and all that stuff. But basically, looks about the same as far as the way they set up valving and all that stuff. So we're gonna get that done. Um, just give you a quick glance 
of what a build sheet looks like. There you go. We're not going to give away all of our secrets here. Um, that's why we get paid to do this. Also why uh, we're with uh, TBT because Travis, T is Travis Flateau, started the company, uh, is an amazing tester, also has lots of connections in the industry, can get uh, information from everyone. And uh, yeah, anyway, that's why we use him and we use TBT in general because we share the information around with all the TBT dealers so that we get the best settings overall. So this is early um, on one of these uh, two strokes. Now, Travis has been valving the four stroke chassis. They've been doing that for a little while. So this is definitely gonna be based on that. But then also given my feedback on riding it stock and then what it came as stock and that's what we're gonna set it up as. Now, this probably won't be our end all uh, setting on this. We might be uh, fiddling with it a little bit more. I'm going to get it, ride it, click it, see where we end up with the clickers, and then we'll get a really, really solid setting uh, for Enduro here. So um, if you guys are interested, please reach out. We can get you guys set up uh, with a TBT revalve, um, bladder kit, whatever you guys need. Uh, so I'm going to let Zach get that stack all set up and go. I'll probably show you kind of what it looks like as he's getting ready. Uh, and then when we get the forks apart, we'll get in there. Uh, while he's doing that though, I'm gonna go over here to my bike and take a look at the uh, linkage bearings, the swing arm bearings and everything and see, um, hopefully they have lots of grease in them. If not, we're gonna grease them up. All right guys, got the tri-link thing apart and I'm not gonna take it out because these are already trying to fall out because there's not that much grease in there. It's definitely greased, it's not totally dry, but there's not enough. So I'm gonna re-grease all these and then we're gonna pull the dog bone off and then we'll pop the swing arm too. All right, I heard words from Mr. Sheets. <laughs> the piston is kind of interesting. What do we got that's different, Mr. Sheets? smoother chamfers around the ports instead of sharp steps okay so this is the new one yeah, yeah that's the new one okay oh two different sized holes which... oh so yeah okay i see those are two different sized also again like that smoother chamfer around hmm. the face there cool that's interesting like a little bit bigger who knows ports too Okay, bigger rebound ports, and I think, yeah, overall, kind of a smoother design. Like everything is just a little more rounded. Even those little, those little posts, standoff posts, are rounded on the other one. So, pretty cool. All right, guys, got the swing arm uh, off, and I'm just gonna do the same thing I did here on the other one. I'm just gonna push this in a little bit because. These are not caged and there's definitely not a ton of grease in there. So gonna grease those up, put this all uh, back together. Um, there's nothing special about taking these things apart like any other one. This is just like every other um, KTM as far as getting it apart. So that's why I didn't show you guys me taking it apart, but definitely looks like if you guys get one of these, make sure you take it apart, put more grease in it. Cause this year, this model, whatever, didn't come with enough grease. All right, so I got the linkage swing arm all back onto the bike. Mr. Sheets now is valving the high speed stack. So there is the high speed carrier situation. And there's all the wee shims. Um, and it's got its own little piston and everything. Uh, and again, I've explained this before in other videos, but the high speed is not for you going across the ground high speed it's the speed with which the shock is moving uh, and that is the it's kind of it's a bypass not kind of it is a bypass it's what that nitrogen reservoir is on the side of the bike it's for the if the shock is moving too quickly for the oil to flow through the ports on the piston like i showed you before then it goes through the high speed stack and into the reservoir uh, there's in this case there'll be a bladder full of nitrogen to let that oil come in and then push it back through uh, it's basically like i said a bypass if you look at king shocks on trophy trucks they'll have like lots of bypasses like three or four bypasses per shock um dirt bikes have one bypass into the um into the reservoir and uh, yeah that's what that's for so we revalve that even uh, not a lot of folks do that if you do like a gold valve kit or something like that you're not getting the high speed revalve that's usually not happening um, lots of other suspension companies do it but if 
you're just buying a gold valve kit or something like that from Racetech, it's not going to have that kind of information. Right. Zach has got the shock almost all done. He's uh, bleeding it. It's kind of hanging out here. We got the fork apart. And there, I believe, is what they're calling the hydrostop. Uh, so you can see that's where it's going to bottom. It's going to, as the fork compresses, that's going to go down into there will be obviously some room for oil to move around it but it should you know be a super anti-bottoming thing as this goes into that cup it's going to resist are there holes in there or not anything yeah, i don't think so so no but that is definitely brand new sort of ports in that thing maybe oh yeah it looks like there's maybe some ports right there so as that thing goes into the uh cup it's gonna allow you know oil to come out so it doesn't just lock and you know hit but you know bottom out right here it'll allow it to go but slow it down quite a bit that's pretty cool air forks are already pretty anti-bottoming <laughs> forks in general um, but this actually um, as we get in, we'll, you know, go further in there and see, but, um, we'll get in there and see what's going on. But the, my guess is the valving and the air spring and all that are going to be softer so that if it didn't have that, it might, you know, bottom more easily because one thing about air forks is that they're always kind of harsh generally. Um, but, uh, I'm guessing that this way this is going to be set up, it should be really cool. That's pretty cool to see though. That is one massive difference between that and the other. Um, and uh, guys, uh, real quick, uh, I've been getting comments already on Facebook about how uh, dirty my bike is and how unprofessional it is that we're working on this thing dirty and all that stuff. Well, like I said, it snowed, it's cold, it's nasty outside. This is my personal motorcycle. So I am willing to do it with some dirt on it, but you'll see, all the suspension work is happening over at Zach's station that's nice and clean. <laughs> and my station is where things are dirty because it's not that big a deal. Um, I've got the throttle body all closed off, all that stuff. So whatever. If you are worried about us working on your bike in the dirt, don't. Um, we will make sure it's super duper clean before we work on it. Again, this is my motorcycle. Um, I'm willing to let dirt get on things and whatever because... Well, partially because, man, I keep finding sand from that <laughs> last race, no matter how much I clean it. But, um, uh, yeah, anyway, that's what's going on there. Like I said, Zach's area is the super clean area. My area is the take things apart and don't worry about it area. All right, Mr. Sheets has the damping rod out. There it be. Um, so compression shims down here, rebound shims up there. Uh, he is going to do his thing and revalve that. Like we said earlier, there's quite a big difference um, in this design uh, from before. I mean, it's basically the same idea, um, not any huge massive redesign, but their valving and things like that are different. I'm guessing that has to do, like I said, with that um, hydro stop in there. Now they probably changed some things to let that adjust for the bottoming and all of that. I don't know. Exactly what all their thinking is. I was, I'm not one of the KTM engineers, but we are uh, digging in and finding out what we're going to do. And uh, like I said, make sure you stay tuned. Guys are going to be testing this thing heavily and beating on it uh, to make sure that we're really happy with the settings. Anything new here, Mr. Sheets? This is all the same. These are generally like one machine piece. Now they got kind of like a separate guy that slides over. Okay. Oh, so this is usually one piece. Yeah, like I with that. Yeah, this doesn't. Usually. Slides off like okay. Hmm. Cool. Right on. Thank you. Uh, Zach saying we got the specs from Travis and we're going to put a bleed in the compression instead of the rebound. So. Things are different. We're pretty excited about this thing. That should, I guess, theoretically, give a little more bypass to the compression. Yeah, maybe. I wonder if that has to do with that hydro stop thing. Maybe I don't know. 
There we go. Might have to do with that. I don't know. Whatever. Pretty cool though. Um, like I said, we can let Zach do his thing. We won't bother him while he's doing it. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's gonna get that stacked up and then won't be too long before we start putting everything back together. All right, guys, we are down to the last bit of valving um, before he was doing the mid valve. Now we're doing the compression stack. What do you call that? Just the compression? Yeah, usually the, yeah, just the main compression stack. Main, main compression stack. This is what sits inside the cartridge. Where the, there's the cartridge is right there. So the mid valve is what travels up and down. The main compression stack sits in right up in here. And then as that is, piston is uh, pushing oil up, it goes through this, pushes this free piston, moves on that spring. And anyway, so he's got his little stack over there working on that. It's a little bit different design again than uh, what was in previous forks. It's not way different. Um, it's pretty much the same, but there are some differences. So um, like KTM, you know, advertise this is a brand new fork brand new shock guys i'm really excited to get out and try it out with the correct valving in it i think it's going to be really really good um yeah zach's cleaning stuff up going to be stacking this all together then we're going to be putting stickers on it and we will put it back together on the dirty motorcycle over there uh and then uh, hopefully it's going to clean clear out we're going to be able to wash this thing a little bit better because then i'm going to install the RK Tech head, but I'll do that in another video uh, because this one's getting long. So I hope you guys are liking it so far. Um, I will check in here at the end when we get everything back together. All right, Zach finished up my forks and my shock, got the shock installed. Uh, and now I'm gonna show you how we do these forks. And again, yes, my motorcycle's dirty. <laughs> uh, I find it funny that uh, people get so fired up about that. Um, like I said, first of all, it's my motorcycle, not a customer's. Uh, and this is all just surface stuff. And when we take it off, we clean the parts, let Zach work on it way over there in his clean area. Um, so anyway, whatever. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Everybody gets so, so fired up. Okay, so like you saw before, um, I just snugged this down. I did not tighten it yet. Um, Cause now these are, they move independent of each other a little bit. So now let me grab a fork. And start, might as well do this one over here, the left, the brake side. So we're gonna come up and we're gonna line up. that my fork height at the second line uh it's just where i like it now now we know that these are straight right because uh they weren't you saw how it moved a little bit so now we know this is perfectly straight that's good now i can torque these down uh to spec which is uh, i believe yeah 12 newton meters and the reason you don't tighten these down very much is that the piston, the, the uh, fork slides past this. And if you squeeze it too tight, you'll actually, first of all, bind up a little bit and you'll wear a spot in your anodizing on the inside. Now we can come in here and we can torque this down. And this is, I think it's supposed to be 17 or 12 Newton meters, but here, the good thing is there's this pinch bolt right here that's gonna help hold it. So if you do it a little on the loose side, it can't come off. Now these tops are 17s and that's a little bit stronger than down here because again, the fork doesn't slide all the way up into here and you, just, you want these nice and tight. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna end this video here because now I gotta put the wheel back on here. 
uh, and take this thing out and actually super clean it because we're going back into the engine. Um, that is a very, very important place to have really, really clean because we don't want anything getting inside that motor. Uh, that's why I had the rag and the throttle body. Um, so I left the air filter on, uh, even though it's a little bit dirty right now, I left it on. I didn't take it off because I didn't want anything getting down in there that could then get into the motor. So that is a very, very important thing to have super clean. Um, and the suspension is important, really, really important to have clean on the inside, which again is why we work in a clean area over there on the suspension. That's why I cleaned it all up before I even gave it to Zach. Um, but yeah, I hope that is informative guys. I hope you like to see what that, um, I hope you like seeing what's inside of the suspension. Uh, I really, really think I'm going to like these things now. Um, I liked them before, honestly, I was really happy with the way the bike was working stock, but I know we can always make things better um, because stock is kind of just shooting in the middle. Um, and I know how I ride. Uh, Travis knows how I ride. Zach knows how I ride. Uh, so we should, uh, this thing should be nice and tuned up, ready uh, for me. Can't wait to take it to Oklahoma and race it again. Uh, see if we can get even better results out of it, which should be hopefully po uh, possible and probable now. Um, yeah, anyway, hope you guys like that. Hope you get a, uh, hope you subscribe to the channel, stick around for more content on this. Also, make sure you check out other, other videos. Uh, we do a weekly schlog or shop vlog, and we do lots of other how-to videos. Uh, so anyway, we also have a lot of fun with the huge dirt biker videos. Don't worry, guys. Those are coming back very soon. I've just been really busy with this bike. So I love you. Get out, spread the gospel two wheels. Make sure you get out and pop some wheelies.